I'm aware that I probably sound like Veruca Salt or Dudley Dursley, and we've got so many great features from Angular recently, and I'm making a video that is basically saying I want more of the new cool stuff and I want it now. I'm happy to wait, but knowing how much better the stuff coming, likely sometime in Angular v17, is, it makes you wonder how we ever did without it. Specifically in this video we are going to look at why signal based view queries using the new view child API will be so much better. Quite simply this will allow us to access an element from the template through a signal. View child has always been kind of awkward because the result of the query will initially be undefined when the component is first being created as the view hasn't been initialized yet. So typically you would trigger whatever you needed to do within the ng after view init lifecycle hook where it would be defined. In fact, we can use this technique right now with signals as a workaround. In ng after view init, you can set a separate signal with the element you are interested in, which achieves basically what the new view child API will do. It's just a bit annoying because we have this extra boilerplate to achieve what we will soon get out of the box. But why is it even interesting to have this as a signal in the first place? Well, that signal is going to notify us when it is updated, meaning we can react to an element becoming defined declaratively rather than doing something imperatively within ng after view init or through some other means. Let me contextualize with a feature I've worked on recently. This is essentially a dumb component that handles loading and playing videos, and it has some non-trivial local state to manage. First, let's take a look at an imperative approach without the new signals APIs. Basically, I want to react to the video load starting and completing, so I have set up these data sources which can be nexted. This is a more imperative approach because I am not just directly listening for the actual load start and load finish events from the video element, I am manually nexting these when it happens. Because at the time these sources are set up, the video element in the template is undefined so I can't get access to its events. Instead, I have this effect that runs only when the playing or status state changes and when the video element is actually defined. I then set up the event listener on the element with a callback that calls next on the source. It's not terrible, but I'm losing the benefits of coding declaratively here, and this approach also requires that I allow signal writes, meaning we have an effect that eventually writes to a signal, which then in turn might also trigger more effects. This is allowed, but it is something you should be careful with. Now let's look at the more declarative approach that will be made easier with the new view child API. Keep in mind that I am faking these APIs, the input and view child APIs are not available yet. Also keep in mind I am making some assumptions about how this API will work. So theoretically this video element will be a signal of my HTML video element from the template. When the video element becomes defined, the signal will be updated. I want to utilize this in my source stream so I convert it to an observable and filter out any undefined values. Now rather than just having subjects that are nexted, we can set up the video load start and complete sources using the actual underlying events they are based on. This video isn't about the RxJS and signal state management approach I am using here. I'll link to a video about that if you are interested. But basically these sources are then subscribed and then we define reducers to determine how those events emitting should update the state signal. There is still some imperative side effects here, as I need to react to the state changing to trigger the load, play, and pause methods on the HTML video element, which does not provide a declarative API. But this effect and the imperative code here is much simpler now, and we no longer have effects triggering signal writes. Now there is one little lie I've told you here. I've left something out because it is a hyper-specific workaround for this specific use case, so it really isn't relevant to the general concept. However, this video load start source actually needs to look like this. I'm pretty sure this is a browser bug or quirk, but basically subscribing to the load start event here will actually trigger the load of the video, which I don't want in this case. So I specifically have to react to the playing state changing and only subscribe to that event when the user is actually trying to play a video, which unfortunately makes this stream considerably uglier. But again, this is very specific to this video loading case. If you've got patterns you can't wait to use, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you like this, consider a like or subscribe before you go to help spread the video, and I hope to see you again next time.